Hello everyone, in this video we're going to draw a red panda. Start by drawing a circle as a guide for the head. To draw the circle, first make two small marks to indicate the circle's length, and then on the sides make two more small marks to indicate the circle's width. Then connect the marks using curved lines to finish the shape of the circle. Sketch lightly at first so that it's easy to erase if you make a mistake. Also, pause the video to draw at your own pace. The circle doesn't have to be perfect, but if you're having trouble drawing it, just trace the outer edge of a coin, a bottle cap, or anything else with a circular edge. To the left, draw another circle as a guide for the front part of the body. Use the small marks method to draw this circle too. First make a few small marks to indicate the sides of the circle, and then connect the marks using curved lines to finish the shape of the circle. The right side of this circle will be behind the head circle. Make this circle slightly bigger than the head circle. Farther left, draw another circle as a guide for the back portion of the body. Use the small marks method to draw this circle as well. Draw the two body circles roughly the same size. The right edge of this circle should be behind the first body circle. Inside the head circle, draw a curved horizontal line. This is a construction guide that will help you place the facial features later on. On the top half, draw a curved vertical line for another construction guide. On the bottom half of the head, draw a small circle as a guide for the muzzle. Make the muzzle small in relation to the head circle. The top of this circle should overlap the construction guides. On top of the head, draw two small arcs as guides for the ears. Use the construction lines as guides to help you place the ears on the head. Don't draw the ears too high up, draw them closer to the sides of the head. Under the front part of the body, draw an angled line as a guide for the front leg. Bend the line to indicate the joints and the foot. To the right, draw a similar line as a guide for the other front leg. Red pandas have short legs, so don't draw these lines too long. Under the circle on the left, draw another long angled line as a guide for the hind leg. Bend this line in the middle to indicate a joint and again at the bottom for the foot. To the right, draw a similar line as a guide for the other hind leg. Bend the line to indicate the joint and foot. Connect the body circles using sloping lines to finish the guide for the torso. Curve the lines slightly. Connect the head to the body using shorter lines to create the guide for the neck. The bottom line should be longer than the top. On the left side of the body, draw a long curved line as a guide for the tail. Curve the bottom of the line to the right. And that's it for the guidelines. Now let's start on the final drawing. Inside the head, lightly sketch two small circles for the eyes. Place the eyes on top of the horizontal construction guide and on either side of the vertical guide. The eyes should be small in relation to the head. When you get the sizes and positions of the eyes right, darken the shapes. Make the sides of the shapes pointier as you darken them for the corners of the eyes. The inner corners of the eyes should point down toward the muzzle. The outer corners of the eyes should point up toward the ears. 
Make the eye on the right slightly smaller because the head is turned. Draw a few curved lines around the eyes for creases. Keep these lines close to the shapes of the eyes. Inside each eye, off to the side, draw a tiny circle for highlights. In the middle of each eye, draw a thin oval and shade it in for the pupils. Inside the muzzle, lightly sketch a small oval for the nose. Place the nose close to the right edge of the initial circle. When you get the size and position of the nose right, darken the shape. Draw curved lines on the sides of the nose for the nostrils. Make the lines for the nostrils thick and dark. Draw a couple of lines on the bottom of the nose for creases. The shape of the nose should be wide. Under the nose, draw a curved horizontal line for the mouth. The sides of the mouth should touch the edges of the initial circle. Sketch lightly at first and only darken the mouth when you get the shape right. Use short strokes as you darken the mouth to create a furry texture. Draw the sides of the muzzle along the basic path of the initial circle. Curve the lines up toward the eyes. The sides of the muzzle should be wider than the initial circle. Use short strokes to create a furry texture. Add a few strokes between the eyes for the top of the muzzle. Below the mouth, draw a curved line using a series of short strokes for the furry chin. Follow the basic path of the initial circle as you draw the chin. Use the arc on the top left side as a guide to draw the ear. Darken the shape of the arc using short strokes. Draw a few short strokes within the shape for the fur that's inside the ear. Extend the strokes to the left and out of the ear. Use the arc on the right as a guide to draw the other ear the same way. Darken the arc and draw short strokes within the shape for the fur that's inside the ear. Use the first circle as a guide to draw the head. Draw a series of short strokes along the basic path of the circle to create the furry shape of the head. Make the top of the head flatter than the initial circle. Don't make the strokes too long. Make the sides of the head wider than the initial circle. The shape of the head should be wide. Draw the bottom edge of the head higher than the initial circle. Draw a couple of curved shapes above the eyes for the markings on the fur. Use short strokes as you draw the shapes for a furry texture. Draw these shapes close to the eyes. Draw a couple of bigger shapes on the sides of the head. The shape on the right should be slightly thinner because the head is turned. Use the second line from the right that's under the body as a guide to draw the front leg. First, lightly sketch the shape of the leg around the guideline. Make the top of the leg slightly wider than the bottom. Curve the bottom of the shape to the right to create the foot. Make the front of the foot round. When you get the shape of the leg right, darken the lines. 
Use a series of short strokes as you darken the sides of the leg for a furry texture. The top of the leg should be inside the body. On the front part of the foot, draw a couple of curved lines to separate the toes. On the tip of each toe, draw a small triangular shape for the claws. Make the tips of the claws pointy. Use the line to the right as a guide to draw the other front leg. First, lightly sketch the shape of the leg around the guideline. Curve the bottom of the shape to the right to create the foot. When you get the shape right, darken the lines. The top part of this leg will be hidden behind the body. On the tip of the foot, draw a curved line to separate the toes. On the tip of each toe, draw a small triangular shape for the claws. Use the angled line on the far left side as a guide to draw the hind leg. Just like with the front legs, first, lightly sketch the shape of the hind leg around the guideline. Make the shape of the leg wider at the top than the bottom. At the bottom, curve the shape to the right to create the foot. The top of the hind leg should be wider than the top of the front leg. When you get the shape of the hind leg right, darken the lines. Use a series of short strokes as you darken the shape to create a furry texture. Draw short curved lines along the front part of the foot to separate the toes. On the tip of each toe, draw a small triangular shape for the claws. Use the angled line to the right as a guide to draw the other hind leg the same way. Lightly sketch the leg around the guide and only darken the lines when you get the shape right. Draw the toes and claws at the bottom using curved lines and small triangular shapes. Use the remaining shapes and lines as guides to draw the rest of the body. Simply darken the outer edges of the guides to create the shape of the body. Darken the lines using short strokes to create a furry texture. Use the long curved line on the left as a guide to draw the tail. Lightly sketch the shape of the tail around the guideline. Make the tail wide. When you get the shape of the tail right, darken the lines. Make the tip of the tail round. Use a series of short strokes to create a furry texture on the tail. Now go over the final lines with permanent ink. The next few steps are sped up so that the video isn't too long. Take your time and be careful when you ink your drawing to avoid any accidents. Don't ink the initial guidelines, only the final drawing. When the ink dries, erase all of the guidelines. Now color your drawing. Use different shades of brown to color the bottom part of the body. Add the rings on the tail using brown too. Use lighter shades of brown and red to color the rest of the body. Leave the ears, the muzzle, and the markings on the head blank for the white fur. As you color, use strokes that go in the direction of the fur. On the head, the strokes radiate outward from the muzzle. On the body, the fur has a horizontal orientation. 
continue to add different shades of brown and red across the body. Color the nose black but leave a thin strip blank at the top for a highlight. Use different shades of red like red orange and dark red. Color lightly at first and gradually build up to darker colors. For light shades of a color, push down very lightly on your pencil, then push down harder for darker shades. Use dark brown throughout the body to create shadows. Shadows will give the figure more dimension and volume. Pick a light source as you color so that the shadows are consistent throughout the body. Here the light source is coming from the top, so most of the shadows will be on the underside of the shapes. Slowly and gradually blend all the colors together. Push down slightly harder on your pencils to blend the colors together. Draw a cast shadow at the bottom using gray and a bit of blue. Use gray to add shadows on the white sections of the fur. Coloring can be time consuming, so be patient and take breaks. Keep coloring until you're happy with the result. And that's it for the red panda. Don't forget to pause the video to draw at your own pace. Also, please visit howtodrawanimals.com where every step of this tutorial is broken down into an individual image. That's how, and then the number two, then drawanimals.com. If you'd like to support my channel, please consider buying my books on Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description below. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, a comment, and subscribe for more videos in the future. Thank you for watching, and until next time, keep drawing.